Application Lifecycle Risk Management Podcast, Episode 15, Running Selenium in Parallel with Any .NET Being Tested Through. For those of you listening to the podcast version of this, there's a lot of code that I'll do my best to describe, but if what I say sounds interesting, you're going to want to check out the article I've linked to in the description. I also link to many of the technologies I mentioned, so you'll want to make sure you go there to find those links. As of the time of this post, I've yet to find a viable way of running Selenium tests on multiple browsers using Selenium Grid. This doesn't mean that there aren't a few articles out there that have some kind of solution, but they've never satisfied me as a solution I could easily plug into my already created test. While my preferred testing tools are NUnit and SpecFlow, the method I am about to propose should work for any existing test harness that you might want to use. The only prerequisite is that you're using page models to wrap your access to any particular web page. This article assumes that you already know how to write Selenium Test, already know how to use Selenium Grid, already know how to use the page model pattern, and already know how to use your chosen test harness. Okay, so now on to the main event. In order to run multiple browsers at the same time, the easiest way is to provide a wrapper page model that calls multiple instances of the page model at the same time. The hard way of doing this would be to create an interface that represented the real page model and then create a proxy class that would hold a list of all the real page model objects we needed to call. Each time a property or method or the proxy gets called, all it would do would be to pass the call down into the real objects in parallel. This would work, but the main drawback is that I really don't want to have to write a method in my proxy class for each method in my real page model. So the question is, how do we get around this? Enter the little known class dynamic object. In .NET 4, Microsoft introduced the dynamic keyword. One of the main uses is for places where you need to be able to declare a variable in your code that the compiler won't know how to resolve the type of until runtime. I could have used this several years ago when I had two assemblies that needed to reference each other. In that case, I used reflection, but dynamic would have worked with a lot less work. Dynamic object is a specific class that allows us to resolve property and method calls at runtime using our own logic. We will also use the task parallel library to implement our parallel calls. And for completeness, and so that no one is confused when they're trying to implement this code, you'll need to use the following sta using statements at the top of the CSS file. So let's get started. The first thing we will need is a class declaration. So we declare a class parallel page model type of T page inherits from dynamic object. Now the T page allows us to specify the interface the real page model implements. Yes, we still need the interface, but we won't need to create a new wrapper class for every page model we want to wrap. The class inherits from dynamic object so that all of our on the fly goodness will work. Next, we'll need some place to store an array of page objects we want to proxy. So we add a private variable underscore page for that purpose. By using tPageArray, we create a variable that is the same type array as the page models we're proxying. Next, we need a constructor. For this, we're going to pass in a params of tPage. By using the params keyword, we can either pass in page objects as an array or as individual parameters. The magic happens in three overridden methods that are in dynamic object. The try invoke member resolves any method calls. The try set member resolves any property setters. And the try get member resolves any property getters. So let's add those methods next. So here are the stubs. Inside of the try invoke member method, the first thing we'll want to do is to use reflection to call into the real methods. Since we could have multiple instances of the same method we need to call, we will want to do this in a loop. 
When I first worked this out, I started by just implementing a for each loop, but we're going to jump right to using the parallel for each method. Parallel for each will let us pass in an array and run a lambda expression on each element in the array. So, our for each loop will look like this. Note that our lambda expression is not doing anything more than a simple reflection call. The result that is returned is added to our concurrent bag collection. A concurrent bag is a collection that is specifically made for parallel calls. We could get into trouble if we added something to a list collection unless we added some parallelization gatekeeping around it. I'm for doing as little work as possible, so we're using concurrent bag. The second thing we want to do is to process the return results. And for this, we're going to set up a basic for each loop off of the results. Inside the for each loop, we will process the results collection. If the type that got returned is the same type as the type that the page is proxying for, we just need to make our result value, the return value, the try invoke member is going to return for us to the code that called the proxy, equal to the proxy object. If the result is not null, meaning either that a previous result was null or we haven't processed the loop yet, we want to check to see if the value of the current loop result is the same as the loop results we've already processed. If it isn't, we throw an exception. And finally, we just set the result to whatever we have at this point. This handles most of the conditions, but there may be more. And the last thing we want to do is return true to tell the system we were able to process the method. Now, since the implementation of try get member looks very much like try invoke method, we'll tackle that next. In fact, the only difference between the two methods is the code inside of the parallel for each parameter block. So here it is. And then try set member is the easiest implementation of all, since there are no results to worry about. Okay, so everything I've talked about so far will work, but you won't get any IntelliSense help from Visual Studio if you use this code without tweaking it. So what we need is some way of casting the parallel page model object to the T page type that we passed in. And for that, we're going to use a cool library I found called Impromptu Interface. You'll need to add a using statement to the top of your code using Impromptu Interface, and then you'll need to add this method to the parallel page class public t page cast return this dot act like. You would use this code like this. I my page model p equals page model proxy dot cast where I my page model is the interface that specifies what your real page model looks like. And just in case someone is tempted to mention that this in the comments, you can't use operator overloading to achieve the cast because we need it to return t page, which could be anything and the compiler can't deal with that. If you really want to use operator overloading, you'll need to provide your own specific implementation that ends up calling the code above. So calling the parallel page model. To set up the parallel page model, your code would look something like this, assuming that you have a page model class called my page model with an interface of i my page model. So I only just started using this. It works for my current implementation, but you may need to tweak it so it works for you. For example, my assumption here is that you're only dealing with simple types or the page model type you are proxying for. There's no code here that will handle a situation where the call to a method would return an entirely new page model. Since the code I'm testing is a collection of single page applications, and I'm not testing navigation at this point. This is not a consideration for me, but it would be relatively easy code to implement. If I did that, I would probably handle it by subclassing this main class that does the bulk of the work and override the try member methods that needed to deal with that situation. The other possible way of dealing with the situation is to pass in a list of types that need to be wrapped in their own parallelization object as parameters in the constructor and add some generic code in the parallel page model class. Finally, I'm well aware that this code may have bugs. If you find one, go ahead and fix it. You can leave a comment so others will benefit. 
Here's the entire class in one chunk for those of you who just want to copy and paste the solution. Now there are other places on the web talking about paralyzing selenium, and the most common way of doing it would be using MBUnit to achieve the parallelization, or to use browser stack. But nobody that I know of has come up with a way of using NUnit and some of the other test harnesses. Of course, there are a ton of links of people asking how to do this.